The Bamboo Project Podcast starts in three. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. My name is Donovan Gray, the future $10 billion man. On the way to $10 billion, I decided that I am going to help create 1,000 millionaires, including myself. And not by being a guru or selling you a course, but by doing the things I love to do every day and documenting my journey to get there i figure i'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to my name is donovan gray and this is how i will turn my life into a living we made different video playlists for all the things we are into and you can find all of those in the description box below this may be your first time here and if it is welcome to the family but for everybody else you know who y'all are. This is chapter four, page 183. Today is Thursday, September 21st, and it is 1016 a.m. All right. So for all the new people here, before we get into the topics of the day, we always start off with screen time. That is when I and Melissa check our phone to see how much time we spent on it last week. All right, so guys, I'm excited for this week. Let's see how I did. So every day last week, I spent an average of, okay, drum roll, please, guys. Let's see. Let's see what I was doing last week. Damn, that's still kind of high. Seven hours and 30 minutes on my phone each day. My most used app was X for 10 hours and 27 minutes, then Instagram for 7 hours and 55 minutes, and then YouTube for 7 hours and 37 minutes. Hmm. It's pretty, it's pretty high. Let's see. Now, one thing I want to start checking now, which I never really checked before, is the time of the day I'm using my phone. Because I learned from last week's podcast that I'm using my phone in the morning. So if I can find something to do from like 5.30 to like 8.30, 8 o'clock, I could dramatically reduce my screen time. So let's see, my highest usage day last week was Tuesday for 10 hours and three minutes, right? Yeah, from about six to 10, maybe like 5.30 to 10, I'm on my phone and I'm on the blue app, which is social. So I have three hours and 48 minutes. Then for two hours and 18 minutes, I'm doing productivity and finance, which is what falls in that category. That's my mail, that's square. Social is three hours and 48 minutes. I'm on Instagram for two hours and 10 minutes that day. Yeah, like I said, that's most of it is literally in the morning. It's mostly in the morning. So that's how I would reduce that is by actually uh, doing something else in the morning. I picked up my phone on average 108 times per day. My first use app after pickup was mail. Then YouTube, the Instagram. So, baby girl, what was your screen time like last week? Last week, I spent eight hours and 12 minutes on my phone. That is up 45% from the week before. Mm, eight hours. It's a lot. Right, I'm like, what's going on here? My most used app is TikTok. Ooh. For 17 hours. Ooh. Then Instagram for 10 hours. Then Gmail for five. Camera for three, messages for two, music for three. Ah, my first used app after pickup is Gmail, then music, then Instagram, and that's so crazy. What? Like, that's okay. That's kind of crazy. I picked up my phone on average 119 times per day. The crazy part to me is that I pick Instagram is my third, like, um, most apps that I open once I pick up my phone. Mm -hmm. TikTok is in number five. It's in the fifth position. Mm -hmm. But you spend the most time on it? Right. So I only I only opened up the TikTok app 57 times last week. But those 57 times I opened it, I was on it for 17 <laughs> hours. So let me see. What's that? I was on Insta I picked up Instagram 108 times. I can see that. I feel like I feel like the stroll, the 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 scroll could get you thirty minutes. I feel like it could get you Easy. quick thirty minutes. Oh my gosh, they know me so. Especially long. if you watch a nice longer one. Oh my gosh, I be I be in the TikTok tea. Oof. Yeah, Donovan knows. I love me some drama. Mm -hmm. All right, now for the subscriber check on the main channel. Oh, excuse me, on the candle channel. That's Ember Candle Co. 
link in the description we are at 542 subscribers and on our main channel we are currently at 6613 subscribers so uh where should i even begin i guess i could begin with today uh i was in a great mood i was in an amazing mood this morning uh honestly the last couple of days i could say i was in a very good mood and the reason why i was in a very good mood is because i have been able to singularly focus on one thing and just continue trying to make that thing better just keep i only have one singular i have nothing else in, that's going on in my brain other than just i would say that's not true 98 percent of my brain power is going to one thing so I'll get back to what that thing is later, but the thing that ruined that this morning for me was the doorbell ringing, right? Now, we live on the 23rd floor, so when anybody rings our doorbell, we are always like, well, that's, this is it. That's the time. They're about to knock the door in because we haven't paid rent in, I don't know, four years, maybe, uh, Con Ed in maybe two or three years, uh you know different debt credit cards that we owe so when the doorbell ring we're like okay let's see what what's going on so the doorbell rang this morning and it was not how would i put this uh if it's at night i feel less angst about it when it's in the morning i'm like who is coming to the house at eight o'clock in the morning there's nothing here to be, there's nothing in this house for 8 o'clock. We didn't order no food. Nothing is here for 8 o'clock. So I go to the door, right? I get my shirt, put it on. You know, I walk across our studio apartment and I go to the door and there's two men at the door, right? It's a black guy and maybe another black guy. He's light skinned, could have been Spanish. I don't know. And they were like we're looking for this person right here right they're like donovan gray i'm like yeah that's me what's uh what's going on he's like yeah now he's i'm gonna recall it as i remember right he's like yeah we work for con Ed, right i'm like oh, okay he was like yeah you owe twenty four hundred dollars and i'm like yeah yeah i do i'm like okay i i got I probably i wouldn't be surprised if i owe that much uh he was like so you know like are you gonna make a payment <laughs> and i'm like right now like you think i'm gonna go in my piggy bank and pull out 2400 dollars and give it to you a guy at my door right i don't that's not gonna happen so we were kind of just standing there and the other guy was standing there and we we're just looking at each other like diddy and odell beckham kind of like all right what is happening so he was like oh you know they're gonna shut it off uh if you don't pay i was like okay I, i'm like i bro i don't know there's nothing that i could do that would stop that so i don't know what to tell you like if they said they could shut it off right now and they need a five grand or a hundred grand or 200 grand it's like bro i can't have it i don't have the money to give it to you there's nothing i could do to for you telling me this is like i now know this information but i cannot do anything with it so he said that he kind of just stood there and i'm like I, there's no money to give you bro so then you know, I've been on this new thing um, where I start to kind of ask the question I have in my mind uh, more often, right? So I'm just like, so when are they going to shut it off? Like, when is that supposed to happen, right? I'm thinking he's going to say a week. He, I think he's going to say by the end of this week. I think he might say by the end of the day, 24 hours, 48 hours. The man says in 30 minutes. I'm like, in 30 minutes? 30 minutes they're going to shut it off? I'm like, that's kind of quick. And he said, uh, yeah, uh, he said the office will shut off in 30 minutes. And he said, call, he said, call the office for something or another, Some, something along those lines, right? To, to make a payment. That's what he said. Call the office to make a payment. And I'm like, sure. I, uh, sure. I'll look into that. That ruined my morning. Cause I'm like, oh my goodness. I've been working on the website. I've been trying to get the website up. That has been my singular focus for the last three days. I am only focusing on the website, right? I don't want to focus on anything else. Melissa has been focusing on, on Pinterest. We have been, we have changed the outlook that we have on things and we're approaching things from that perspective. So 
I'm like, okay, in my mind, we are on the right path, right? We're we're good. Uh, we're not really having any issues. Everything is fine. We're chilling, right? Uh, we didn't have a craft fair last weekend, posting on Instagram. Things are going pretty well in my mind. So then that happens, and I'm like, oh, okay. But then I have to remind myself, right? The world is moving whether I'm moving or not. Regardless of whatever I'm doing, the world will go on without me. So I always equate it to those games, you know, maybe think about, uh, I feel like it was Mario or, War- or, or Wario or Luigi, one of them people, right? Where you're like running, or you think about that game, right? And you, the guy's running and you're trying to like jump over the mushrooms and all the pipes before the wall kind of touches you, right? Sometimes it's a flame wall, sometimes it's like a spike wall. And that's kind of how life feels right now, right? So, yes, we haven't paid rent in however long it's been. We haven't paid the continent in however long it's been. And we owe a bunch of debt, right? If I do nothing, the wall will hit me. If I don't move fast, the wall will hit me. If I'm moving fast and not fast enough, the wall will hit me. If I'm moving fast enough, but trip over something, make a mistake here, set me back, something holds me up for too long, the wall will catch me, right? And that's how things have been. So when scenarios like that happen, it just reminds me that there is still a wall coming, chasing me, right? So... At the end of the day, I kind of like it in a sense because I know my personality and I I don't, it's probably not even just me, but if I don't have that constant like reminder that things are going to (laughs) be blowing up, my brain will forget it. I don't stay in constant uh, states of stress or anxiety. Like that's just not how I operate. I have tried to train my body to kind of uh, suppress those kind of feelings or emotions. So... I'll focus on something else that is not causing me stress. I'll do like different kinds of breathing techniques, just different things that make sure my body doesn't feel that same stress level. And then at some point, I'll, I'll just forget about it, right? Now, that has its pros and cons. The pro is that I feel internally, health-wise, I'll be fine. I won't have any super highs and lows where I'm getting drunk or I start taking some type of drugs or I start being come really outlandishly angry like things like that don't really happen because I never let myself get that high emotionally right same thing in the other direction I don't ever get myself too low emotion I'm usually somewhere in the middle and like I said it has this good it has this good and it's bad because sometimes certain things need an intensity level at a long period of time right and with that intensity level comes drawbacks. So if I'm going 100 miles an hour for four days, I might need three days of rest as opposed to eight hours. I might not be able to move for the rest of the week if I went 100 miles an hour for four days, right? So go back to this this uh, this content person. Right? So I come back into bed, I'm kind of breathing. I feel the uncomfortability that I have from it, right? And my brain starts processing what exactly is happening, okay? I start kind of recalling the situation, recalling the words that were said, how they were said, what people were wearing, the the situation, the interaction, what I know history-wise as far as, or circumstance-wise in situations like this. So, one thing that came to my mind is, I I don't know of Con Ed to ever come to your house and ask you to pay them. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. More often than not, they'll just turn it off. Like you just wake up one day, you come home and it's gone. Like they're not really asking like, hey, can you pay this? That's number one, right? Uh, number two, I don't remember them wearing any type of con ed decor or uniform. I didn't, I don't remember that either. So that's two things. Uh, he, one thing I've always noticed too, which is a reason why I think I move so much, like I move so slow, is because when people are trying to rush you for something, it's usually, I feel like, honestly, 99% of the time, you should not go with whatever they're rushing you to do. That's normally how I feel, right? And here's the why I think that. If someone is rushing you for something, right, 
That means, in my opinion, that they are trying to get something out of you. One or two, they made a mistake and they're trying to compensate for that mistake by decreasing the time that you have to make a decision. So if. If let's say think about a track, right, you're running the marathon, not, not a marathon, you're running a relay race and I'm running my first leg, right? I'm running. I run to the, take the baton to the second person and I trip and I fall, right? By the time I get to them, I'm like, take the baton, hurry up, grab it, take it. I'm already behind. You got to the baton, run, hurry up, get it, get it, and go run, right? If I have a 100-foot lead on whoever is behind me, I'm not really rushing a person in front of me to take the baton. Because I'm like, listen, we are, we are so far ahead that I take it. You want to do a backflip. You want to spin around. You want to do whatever you want to do. You're fine because we have so much time to do it. And that's why I feel like when he was kind of rushing me, it's not what well, rushed me to pay. Like he was kind of like, hey, you're going to pay. He was kind of using the silence as a thing to, I guess, make me feel uncomfortable. Because I'm like, bro, I, the logically, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know if you believe that I would come to the door with a credit card. I haven't paid uh, Con Ed. It went up to $2,400. And I would come to the door to a person I don't know and pay you the full money? That seems, doesn't even make any sense. That makes no sense at all. He didn't give me no identifying factors that he's from Con Ed. He didn't have, he just showed me my name on a, on a, might have been a phone or a paper and was just like, yeah, uh, you owe $2,400. He's like, how do you want to pay? I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, come on. So, like I said, to me, that's a red flag. So I'm thinking about those two things, right? And I'm thinking about the whole cut off in 30 minutes. I'm like, 30 minutes? I feel like he pulled that, that number out randomly because he's like, okay, how can I get you to feet to move quicker? I need to increase the urgency in you. So I'm going to say 30 minutes because I'm like, that number is so arbitrary and based in my opinion on no fact that he's just using that to get me to pay quicker. So all of those things combined... I go, yeah, I don't really feel like what he's saying is very accurate. Now, granted, I could be wrong. I have been wrong before situations like this, but that is the vibe I'm getting. And it's been more than 30 minutes since then. So we're going to see if, if by the next podcast, I tell you nothing happened, then that's, the, I feel like they were probably a debt collector or something. And I'm not familiar with, uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you know this meme. I'm not familiar with your game. Content. So I don't know if y'all be coming to people's houses with men talking about some hey, you owe this X amount of money. I don't know. So that was my morning. Right? Now we like I said the the wall is closing in. The fire, the fire is, is here. It's hot. Okay. So we got another letter in the mail. Okay, segue into my next topic. This one is about eviction again. Now I don't what what was the reason that you said you weren't supposed to go to the first one? It didn't say it didn't say for me to be there. But like does that was say for you to be there? I don't think so. I don't maybe. Cause I feel like if your name is on it, that means you they would want you to be there. Cause I feel like normally we like be here at this time and this place. It doesn't say that necessarily. They had a meeting like uh, two weeks ago maybe or a week ago. Um, and we were under the impression that Melissa didn't have to go. So the, another letter came in the mail and this one is saying we have a court date or meeting at the end of the month, right? Actually, I'll read it to y'all. Okay. So the new paper says official notice of court date for motion. It says, or it says, please take notice oral argument on petitioner and respondents motion will be heard on October 30th, 2023 at 9 30 AM. In part A of the NYCHA, any opposition paper should be served and uploaded along with proof of service to NYSCEF no later than two weeks prior to the hearing date. Any reply paper should be served and uploaded along with proof of service no longer, no later than one week prior to the hearing date. And it says, if you have any questions, please call this number, right? That's the second paper. So now. That's my. That's what I think. So now this one. 
Oh, okay, interesting. Okay. I didn't read all of this last time. This one says... <coughs> Uh, all right, guys. I think the light just got shut off. Is the microwave on? Off? It's off. All right. So, like I said, that's for that's thirty minutes. Yep. So, like I said, that, that was my thoughts. They were wrong, and the lights are off. Electricity is off. If this is not anything else, it is definitely entertainment for y'all. So. The lights really shut off all the light. Damn. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. Well, I, it's a good, well, yeah, I don't know. This, this is very funny. Why is it funny to you? It's ironic. Mm-hmm, why? Like we just found out that there's an opening at Brooklyn Museum, so we'll be able to make more money than we would have with just where it was on. And now you want to shut up the lights, but like we have that's what I'm like, opportunity to make more money. So it's like that's what I'm like. Time period is so timing is so crazy. Because right. if this was last week, this would be more of a problem. Yeah. Ah man, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. That's not Wi-Fi. No. Well, I st mine still says it, but maybe it doesn't work. Oh. Well, you don't know. Maybe. Mine doesn't. Which one you can. I'm um, right now. I'm on the 23 one. Definitely feel my butthole tightening up. It's like whoop. Just. Yeah, that's such a good game too. Is this? Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, my stomach tight. Oh God! Whoo! Shit! This is something. This would be a story for the ages. Like I said, I hope this story ends with us getting out of it. That would be nice, but I don't know where this is going. Oh my gosh! No lights. Whoo! That's gonna. This gonna be a good title. Our lights got shut off during the podcast. Oh, Con Ed shut off our lights during the podcast. So, oh man. Uh. Damn, that was that was quick. All right, so I'm gonna keep reading this paper. It's gonna be a dark night tonight. All right. Um, I don't I don't know what the situation is. But they might ask. What they gonna ask for? They want six hundred? No, no, no. We'll call them and be like, listen, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars. All right. So it says on or about February eighteenth, twenty twenty two. The petitioner commenced the proceeding by filing a petition of notice. It says, upon information and belief, respondent failed to file an answer or appear. I was informed by petitioner's counsel that a warrant was requested, but then rejected due to alleged ERAP filing. In accordance with EO, something, 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 petitioner now moves to restore the proceeding to the court calendar as there is, to my knowledge, no ERAP application waiting a determination, nor was there an ERA application at the time of the warrant being rejected. The only ERAP related to the subject premises was an application which was paid out on September 10th, 2021, in the amount of 25000 As of today, the respondent owes $41,414. I am informed that pursuant to EO 202.67, the petitioner can now move to restore the proceedings to the court calendar for resolution of the remaining arrears. I think it's saying that a motion was filed and that's why Melissa's name is on it. I don't think it's saying to come. I think we could have went, but we didn't go. Like it doesn't say to go, but this one kind of acts as us like for our word on the situation. So I guess that'll be, listen, should we should we should we should we live stream that babe? <laughs> so yeah. Uh we might get some we might vlog it, maybe. Well who knows? We'll see. Lord have mercy. Alright. So that's the update for that. Uh Sterling Paul does a, he asked for a house update. Anybody else that wants one, there is none. Guys, like I said, there as far as the house goes, they 
foreclosed technically, but they kind of extended it after they foreclosed. There's no update at all. Is there anything you guys want to know in particular that you want me to answer as far as the house? Because, like, maybe my thoughts, that's, that's all I can really offer is my thoughts on it. But at this point, we don't even think about the house. The house, there's nothing that we can do right now for the house. And anything that we would do for the house doesn't help anybody but the bank. It helps no. If we were to sell the house right now, we would still owe money to the bank. Like if we say, hey, we found somebody to buy the house for 180000 right? The, the, the bank or the people that gave us the money, the, the uh, institutional lender, they would get one hundred and eighty k, and we would still owe them money for the construction costs. So it's like to to even do anything with the house at this point, there's absolutely nothing. Like it doesn't help us at all, right? So not the construction cost. We still owe money for um, monthly payments. So for us to touch the house, unless somebody offers us five hundred k for the house, there's no point in selling the house. Even maybe maybe three hundred might be. I think three hundred would be good. Like somewhere in that ballpark would be a decent number for us to get for the house. For us to like make it right. Other than that, there's nothing else there. So, uh, you know, that's that as far as the house goes. Uh, sad story for sure. Sad story for sure. Now, let's see. Damn. The fridge. Oh, what's in there that's... uh. Everything? Everything in there is not spoilable. What you mean? What's in there that, like, needs the fridge? Like... Okay. Right. You so you said, what in there needs to be in the fridge that if it was not in the fridge, we could not use anymore? You saying everything? I'm like everything in the fridge doesn't have to be in the fridge. There's water in the fridge. Um, Is it chicken, eggs maybe, and milk? Most of the things in the most of the things in the freezer and in the like. I mean, I got. It's well, majority. I don't know what, what it's <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. What well, would I tell myself in the future if I'm watching this back when a vlog? Uh, who, like I said, who knows? I have no idea what the future holds at all. But I do know that currently I am working on the website. And I think that working on the website is beneficial i think that i'm making a lot of headway i think that it can be a high converting website um i think once we install the other platform that allow us to see how people are using the website i think that will then let us uh know how good the website actually is and at that point i feel if we can convert that'll be good we'll work on that and we hired the marketing agency like a week ago so we switched from squarespace to shopify and they have to do whatever they're doing on a new website so they haven't really done anything yet because we're switching over to the new site i would i didn't want them to build out whatever they're going to do on squarespace and then we have to switch it over to shopify and lose all that time period i didn't really want to do that so i figured we do that now get it over with and then they do whatever they have to do on the back end and we can start running the ads that we have to run so we'll see from there. Last weekend was our first weekend with no craft fair. So it was it was very different. The biggest difference for me was not doing the outro at the end of the vlog because at every vlog at the end we'd say how much money we made at the craft fair and or during the week. And during that weekend we had no craft fair. That was cool. We didn't really get to relax much, but I think working in the house on online stuff, whether it's Pinterest, the website, Instagram, it's relaxing compared to like having to worry about making a bunch of candles. Do we have the bag? Do we have the table? Do we have chairs? Do we have whatever we need for the setup? Do we have a sign? Is it broken? Like all different things. It's like, okay, we have none of those things to worry about and we just work on the website and Pinterest and the online sales for the weekend. So that was something very different than I'm used to, but it's only one weekend. So, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, going forward, we have more craft fairs. We have one coming up this Sunday and the one that's this Sunday is at Grand Bazaar. We were able to get two more bookings. So that's great. 
but they're very far apart from each other. So the only way that we have of making money right now would be Brooklyn pop up on Sunday and doing this thing, Grand Bazaar, this weekend. And like, I think we have the the 24th of this month, October. We have one week in October. We have two in November and one in December right now. Um, but we talked about it. The way for us to make money, in my opinion, is to go out on the street and sell the candles. That's it. Like that is set up a tent, uh, set up a table and go and sell our ass off and try to make money from the candles. That's about it. So the online thing, uh, I don't, you know, it's always possible for it to blow up, but I don't have much faith in it going from like zero to a crazy amount of money just because I don't know what it would take to get it to there. It'd have to be 100% luck for us to get to that point. So I know that we can go outside and sell candles. I know that for sure. I know how we can make money. And the scenario that we're in right now requires us to have money because depending on what happens with this house situation, depending on what happens with the light situation, things are going definitely on a downward trajectory. The only upside that I see right now is that Melissa is doing a pitch competition at the end of the month, which if she wins, gets $30,000 for it. So that would be great. There are a bunch of other ones that the people who run them ask her to be in. So that would also help. Um, like I said, the website and doing the craft fairs. Those are the only upsides that I see as it stands right now. But definitely in a um, peculiar situation. Oh, did we just get paid from Google Ads? But it's like $150, so that's, you know, good. I wonder, if I have some of this $30,000? Is that when the lights are on? Bro, that's what I'm saying. And when is that? On the 30th? It's, no, it's like What day is that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, listen, I that would be crazy. That would be crazy because I believe that you gotta go down for it to come up. And that's a we we with this the way this is looking okay, so now Melissa, let me ask you this. With where we are at right now, first of all, who should I start with? I'm gonna start okay. With where we are at right now, you win the thirty K. What do you do with the thirty K? We have to invest enough to have to figure out. Um what do I do with the thirty K? It would definitely have to go into the business. Mm -hmm. At first, I was thinking that maybe we can try to, like, pay people back. So I'm still trying to think about that. Because there's, there's some, like, there's, I feel like I pay off one person in particular, so we don't have that monthly bill anymore. Um, I'm thinking I would... After that, I think we're pretty good on inventory. I think maybe the only thing we might need is like maybe fragrance and wax and maybe like a good amount of um, of cards. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think the money would just go into whatever we need to do. For yeah. So I think it's funny because this, this thing shut off. I think it's funny because when before this last week, honestly, the plan that we had with the thirty thousand was take like two, pay everybody two thousand dollars that we owe money to, right? For the house, pay everybody two grand. And this is what happens with us all, all the time. All the time, it's the same thing. We get a large lump sum of money from somewhere, whether it be a loan from Square, whether it be we had an amazing weekend. It's very frustrating. I don't know if I can tell from my voice. Uh, we have the fair. We might do like 3000 in a day or at three different craft fairs. We might have a Square loan come in. We might get the Kiva loan. We might get a grant from here. And it's like every single freaking time, every single time that we get one of these large, okay, we're going to get over the hump. There is a massive debt that is like knocking on the door every single time, every time. And it's a debt that's big enough to wipe out whatever it is that we just got. It never ceases to amaze me how often that happens, right? So now, like I said, the original goal was that we were going to take the money and pay people off, like pay everybody like two grand. Now, if I'm, this is how I would spend 30K. Right, this is my thing. Um, I would put it into 
whatever setup we need to sell outside that'd be the first thing right i would i would always make sure that the i would pay enough of the con ed and the rent that we could stay here that it's not really an issue whether it's like i feel like that number could be like two thousand maybe like maybe not con ed might i could probably pay like i don't know a couple hundred i feel like if I was to stay here it might be like two months of rent maybe i don't know something in that ballpark um inventory wise like melissa said we're pretty much good the only things i would buy are the branding stuff like the bags or you know the shopping bag the velvet bags things like that um and then the rest of it and that that's, that's the crazy part it's like there's not really much else to, where else that we can put that money into Honestly, here's what I would do. Here's, ex here's exactly what I would do. If we win a 30K, I would not do a craft for the whole month. I would solely focus on online stuff. For the entire month, I would say, okay, we're going to lock in and we're going to just wake up and go to bed and do online stuff. When we did that with wholesaling, we made a tremendous amount of growth in a short amount of time. I remember when we first started, we didn't know anybody, we didn't know anything, and give it like three or four weeks, we were getting phone calls every day from different people who were either agents, who were selling a house, who want to buy, it was just nonstop. And I remember thinking to myself, it's crazy that just from us sitting down for like four or five hours a day and calling people, got us to a point where we are having leads come in like, hey, I found this house for you, or hey, it's a deal over here, or hey, they just changed their price for this one, do you wanna get it? Like, it was nonstop, and that was just from us calling people every day for hours that was it right so i'm like okay how can we apply that to online right so my guy told me about the tiktok shop mind you i think he said he's gonna do seventy five thousand sales this year which is an obscene amount of sales like let me see if we did seventy five thousand sales for the year we would be at seventy five thousand times let's say 35 be 2.6 million dollars right now i don't know his price point for his business in terms of like average order or whatever but it's he's definitely doing over a million dollars a year i think he said he was doing like i don't know if he's doing like 250 a month or something like that like 250k a month it was some crazy number he's doing and he's selling skincare and like oral care and stuff so i just think it's crazy because i think that if we took the time and I like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go on Instagram live. Not Instagram, I'm going to go on TikTok live on a TikTok shop. I'm going to just do that every day. I'll wake up and do I would wake up on the website, editing the website, and be on TikTok live, just talking. Hey, we got the candle. Y'all want to buy a candle? Like, I would, for 30 days, I wouldn't have to worry about any money. I wouldn't have to worry about going to any craft fair. Only candles being made are the ones that people are purchasing, and that would be it. That's completely it. I don't have to worry about no bills. I don't have to worry about food. I don't have to worry about anything, but literally just that so the 30k that's what i would do and i feel like if if we don't get any headway and it, doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be like oh we make a bunch of money i'm just if we don't make any see any growth in that month then i would go okay the next month let's book as many crafters as we can for this month to have some money that's what i would do because even we think about it from the financial perspective we don't have a lot of expenses we really don't and other than debt we don't really have no expenses um it would be the rent for the house which is funny because we were literally playing what are the odds that as soon as we remove the seventeen hundred dollars from artists and fleas the house knocks on our door and goes hey i need seventeen hundred dollars a month now and it's like bro come on like we just literally got this monkey off our back and another one is crawling up our shirt like it, we just got it off right so i said that would be how i would spend a 30k but as we say in so many other podcasts people that have money will get it probably you know they understand 30k for where we are at doesn't really help us in this in this climate in terms of where we're at the end of the year all the craft fairs that we would have booked are already you know booked or they are past the booking date uh we already tried doing artisan fleas that didn't really work we would if we had 30k at the beginning of the year we would have paid for artisan fleas for like two months or something like that we would have paid for every single day for two or three months like that's what we would have done back then now since that's dead we're not doing that so 
Uh, that's what I would do. That's what I do. So that's pretty much as far as I see myself doing. If we get 30k, but I guess, like I said, this. If I was in y'all in y'all position, oh my god! Every week I would tune. I'd be like, nah, this is crazy. Like, how many people are on YouTube doing a video, doing a podcast, doing a vlog, and the content shut the lights off? I can't, I don't know if I maybe if I look it up, I, I might find it. I don't know of anybody mid. We are in mid talk. I'm like, did the lights just go off? Like, damn, that's it. That's the lights. And like I said, listen, y'all might see us. Who know? Who knows what the future holds right now? But uh, like I said, I am. I don't know if the word is excited. I definitely have a lot of emotions inside of me. But the sad part is, it'll go away, which is the worst part about using emotions as motivation because they are fleeting. Um, so what I have been doing, which has been working, is focusing on one thing. One thing. I don't do the website is my one thing right now. I am dedicating all my time to the website to get it fixed before uh the website it was the vlog and it was the podcast i believe they both went up at 6 p.m on sunday and on monday my goal is to get them out as quickly like edit the entire thing and get them out that was my goal i had nothing else to do i'd have no uh, uh fear to worry about this is what i want to do so i'm like all right cool we're gonna do that but uh you know, it is about that time of the podcast for the League of Villains segment. Woo! Yay! We can hear how Melissa feels about everything that's going on. So I know y'all want to hear that. So we're going to bring her on to the podcast. Okay. League of Villains section. Um, how do I feel about everything? Uh, anxious! This is who I am. I'm anxious. So, damn. Like, it's hot. Does AC work? Nope. Damn. Nope. I feel like that's illegal. Damn. I feel like I feel like I, feel like I should still be able to use my AC even if you shut the power off. Damn. Um. Yeah. Like, like it's just the, the timing is impeccable. The timing is amazing. Where like, yeah. There's that. I think the craziest thing is that like when we go to pay for something and the payment doesn't go through and we thought we paid for it and then we use the money for something else and then the thing that we thought we paid for is like hey i want the money for that and it's like i tried to give it to you why did you not take it like what happened what happened in that transaction because that yeah i'm just i'm just tired y'all i'm tired um i have a meeting today at three about the pitch competition for the three thousand um, dollars, I I have to make some updates to my pitch, but I feel really confident about me getting it. And I think all this stuff happening now is kind of like, to me, like Don, you know what Donovan said earlier, where it's like, oh, you know, sometimes something bad has to happen for something good to happen. I feel like it's like that, where it's like, okay, the universe had to, you know, let some air out the bubble before, you know, make some room for some stuff to come in because. This is this is like so random. It's a random day. It's a random day. The men I didn't even know until setting up for the podcast that that even happened. So <laughs> I think you just told me, and then like ten minutes later, the power goes. <laughs> so, um, I think that we are. We are on the right path. I don't think there's any, like, how they explain it. I think people look at having problems or having issues as a thing that you should give up. You should get a job. You should not be doing what you're doing. But I think the only way to ever be successful is to just keep doing what you're doing despite all the bad things that happen. Because bad things will happen in every scenario, every job, every circumstance. You know, you just have to keep moving forward. So I feel like just that's just where we're at. Um, like I said, there's no, there's no, 
there's no ending of opportunities that we have. Like Donovan said, there's a TikTok shop. I'm working on, on Pinterest. Pinterest is a crazy platform, especially for the market that we're trying to be in. I think Pinterest is the place to be at. And I've been seeing traction. So I started this week. I've been posting five pins a day on Pinterest every single day. I make 10 pins and I post five. I have a scheduling um, app that I use called Tailwind and I've been consistent with that so far. So it's only been a couple days it might have been four days now when i started we only had like uh i think 300 impressions for the last 30 days within this week we went f we've gotten a thousand impressions just from posting more frequently on the platform and the more that i post the more i learn about what people like what they want to save the better i get at it it's just you can only get better if you keep doing the thing um regularly and that's the platform that i am going to focus on for the rest of the year so there's just there's a lot that goes into that um you can put your catalog on there and become a verified merchant and people can shop directly from the pins so i'm still trying to figure out how to get our our um account situated to do that i think i have to put it into the website and we're changing our website so you know i can't finish that until everything is done but i feel like once it's done and we learn how to like or i learn how to get everything to be shoppable and everything like that i think it's just going to be a good situation to be in i well, i like the idea of us spending the time on the website um I am a little bit anxious about selling on the street just because like we haven't done it yet so I don't know what the rules are like I have a license and everything but New York is just always weird sometimes you don't know what what you can or can't actually do until you try to do it and then someone tells you the rules or whatever so just a little anxiety about not having done it yet but I feel confident about us doing it and making money doing it like we've sold We've sold in the park before or like at different organ, like still different events, but I'm, I'm very confident about the product, about the display, how it'll look and everything like that. So it's just a matter of, it's just time. It's just time to get everything done, to get everything situated. And once we have, it's not, at this point we have the time right now we're doing the work with the time that we have and the results from that work you will guys will see you later we will see you later as well so that's just how i feel i feel optimistic i feel confident in the business <laughs> it's just we're just trying to get our, our head to stay above water that's just literally the goal right now is to the foundation is there we're just trying to make sure that we stay our head is above that above that foundation and then i think from there once we get you know the whole body up there everything stable we'll be able to launch so i'm actually going to call con ed and see how that conversation goes with them at least you know what's crazy we have this generator here which is already charged so i'm like we could use it for something I don't know what and for how long, but we could use it. I don't know what we need it for, per se. That's the, most, the main thing I'm concerned about is the fridge. This is not the like, <laughs> um, What was I going to say? I think, honestly, they, they might even put us on a payment plan. Probably. How much can you pay right now? $50. Sure. Can they $50? I'm, j I'm joking with you. 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 <laughs> I'm just making a joke. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for calling Con Edison. Please listen to the following as our menu options have changed. If you have an electric outage, gas leak, steam emergency, or hazardous condition, please press 1. If you are calling to verify a field employee's credentials, press 2. Oh, that's what, to that's what we just had. Account through our automated system, press 3. Or if you're moving and need to either close an account or open one at a new location, press 4. To speak with a representative now, press 1. Otherwise, press 2. 
Slightly connected with a representative who can help with your request. The estimated wait time for a representative is between 20 and 25 minutes. Well, if you would guys. Like to take advantage of our callback service. Press 4. If not, please press 8. I see that you are calling from. If you wish to be called back at this number, press 1. Or press 2 to enter a different phone number. So that we can identify you when we call you back. Please speak your name after the tone. Press 1 to end recording. Oh, I was going to try and call to see what happens. But I guess y'all will find out in the next podcast what happens with Con Ed, how much we have to pay, if we're able to pay. Because another thing, too, is I'm wondering how turning it back on would even work. Like, would someone have to come back out here to tell them to turn it on? They just do it automatically. They get a letter in the middle. Like, I don't know how that goes. So, you know, there's that. Um... You know, in other, I guess, lighter news, Melissa found a website that talks about uh, like new construction in the area. So the building next to us that we thought was going to pass us may not be passing us. It seems that they're only building up to the 23rd floor, which is the floor that we are on. Um, but again, you know, just it's in lighter news. It's, you know, it doesn't really change much if we're here or if we're not. I mean, if we're not here, but, you know. That's kind of how that looks. And it looks... It, ah. Here's the thing. I can't tell if the floor they're building right now... I'm, I'll give y'all some... I'll show y'all. Because I feel like I haven't even showed y'all yet. It's easier to tell in the hallway by the elevator. Because like it's this close. Um, so that's outdoor now. Y'all can see the building has been built. Uh, let me open the window for y'all. Only light we're gonna get in here without the well con ed. Um so this is the building. So I think that what they're building right there with the orange I guess tapery or block off whatever it is, I think that's the twenty third floor and I think they're gonna build that floor out and I think that'll be the last floor that we have. So we'll pretty much just be able to see the sky if they do build out on top of this because then they still have to also build the roof. then i remember i don't know if i said it on the podcast or not um last week and i you may not even remember it but i was kind of talking about punching up and i don't think that having big goals is the issue i think it's how i choose to get there which is the problem so one thing i've noticed about a lot of successful people is that they kind of get there i don't want to say by accident but they put one foot in front of the other foot and they do it fast enough that they'll get to 100 miles or 200 miles of walking right they don't the goal isn't set out to just to really like that's the goal that they have like i want to get really far they get as far as their consistency of small steps take them so i think for me one of the things that I am working on now, which I talked about earlier, is just focusing on the one thing. When it's finally done, move to the next thing. Give it my complete focus, give it my complete energy, and then go on to the next thing. And just keep doing that. And then at some point, I will get to where I'm trying to get to. But that's that's my goal. It's just, com just focus right now. Like, this is my thing. I tested it two times. Both times showed me to have different focuses or different uh path to achieve my goal and this is the new path i'm taking so it's just singular one foot in front of the other if my goal right now is working on the website i am just trying to figure out how to make this text be in the middle of the screen that is it i am a that is put the text in the middle okay now make this green okay now make this blue okay i'm not thinking about building a website i'm thinking about going to the website I find one thing that I think needs to be fixed and I fix it. I find one other thing that needs to be fixed and then I fix it. I find one other thing that needs to be fixed and then I fix it. That's that's it. Just keep doing that until I get to a point where I go, okay, I think the website is pretty much done. That's how I'm pretty much focusing or looking at my goals. But I said we will, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm, I'm curious to see how this uh, week will turn out. 
it would be fun for y'all for it to be a crazy week but you know melissa wouldn't really like that so you know for us who are who are experiencing it and living it if we call and they say we could pay fifty dollars and that's fine and then we pay it and the lights come back on in two hours then you know problem solved but then that's no you know there's no fun in that but we will see y'all next week all the behind the scenes content on our social medias mine is donovan gray d-o-n-i-v-a-n-g-r-a-y and you have my phenomenal beautiful amazing girlfriend anita Byrne. a-n-e-t-a-b-u-r-n you know what it is hashtag bamboo project 2023 the road to 500k we got three months ain't about to get evicted with no lights with that being said bamboo project out.